Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. It is Monday, January 10th, and I hope you had a lovely weekend. I did. I uh, did not tell you what I was doing, but what I did was I ran up to Chico and hung out and sewed with my friend Cindy and Needham. You might, you might have heard from her. And it was just really great to get away. One little mishap happened, and that is that on Friday morning, um, and, and the battery went dead on my car. 100,000 miles, almost. And it's a hybrid. And um, we were so lucky that, number one, we were in a Starbucks parking lot. <laughs> Number two, um, we were a, number two. They secured a battery. It's not a battery you can go to Walmart and get. Uh 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 uh. They happen to have it in Chico, and I just and and they had a thing on the news after the whole thing in D.C. with everybody backed up for you know 24 hours in a car, and what your supply list should be. Uh, Wendy wanted to add one thing to the list, and that would be hand sewing. So she, while we sat there for two hours, she sat and hand sewed. <laughs> so I am ever so grateful to the Toyota dealership in Chico. Really great, great guys. And also, I started working on our next project. I'll show you in a little bit my little pieces of it. And i got to see if Kristen got back to me. Um, I don't know. That's for my Karen. My girlfriend. My girlfriend has a boyfriend. <laughs> so I get all the updates. <laughs> so anyways, um, I, I didn't like what I was doing there on the wall. And then I came home, put it up on the wall, and I'm so excited about our next project. Of course, we'll be starting that when I get back from Hawaii at the end of of February or maybe the beginning of March. I don't know. I, I might kick it off on International uh, Quilting Day, which is mid-March, because we got some big things, some big things planned at TQS for you, along with sew-alongs, great prizes, etc. mid-March. Just stay tuned. Make sure you get our newsletter, all right? So, good morning, everyone. It's so wonderful to see your smiley faces here. So, here we go. Let's take a look at what some pictures I gathered from you. So, this is Karen's. And Karen, she uh, she did this with the silks that she got. And I, okay, I get what's going on. I didn't see it this morning. Okay, so the top is the pieced unit, which is lovely. And that tells me you've got some serious chops, Karen. But then here and there, there are circles, and you can see the circles as a close-up down below. So that is really interesting. And I have to tell you people that what you're sending in amazes me. I mean, I start off with a concept, and then you run with it. So yay on that. And then Becky, she says she's hooked now. She had forgotten how much she loves sewing. But look at that, or hand sewing, but look at that one daisy in the upper right-hand corner with those foo-foos around it. I love that. I, I just, I wonder if I can blow it up. I bet I can't. No, I can't once it's in. I just adore that. All right. Then we have Jennifer, and I love this. Go slow, enjoy. Boy, I think we could all put that up as a mantra. Go slow, enjoy. And then we're back to Carol, and I am. she had all the little circles, and I'm just in, so intrigued with what you're doing, Carol. I have not really mastered that stitch that's the bird, and I the green body of the bird, and I know Wendy loves it. I When I do it, it just looks like a mishmash, so maybe I need to come to your house and get some lessons from you. Okay, and then here's Jane. Now, Jane is up in Canada, and she did not get the kit because of the whole shipping and blah, blah, blah. And um, I am glad that Jane did not get a kit because I just think that is absolutely smashing what you have going on. Everything about it is right. Even, I mean, you could stop with those circles now if you wanted. You don't have to, but I adore 
the outside border and how that all gets pulled in. So I'm watching you, Jane. I don't know what you're going to be doing, um, but I don't know what you're going to be doing. Okay, thank you, um, Carol. I'm welcome to New Hampshire anytime. If I were to come, it would not be now. <laughs> it would be in the summer. So the other thing I wanted to share with you was this thread that uh, another gal had there, and um, it's it's by DMC. It's called Diamond. There we go. Uh, we don't have it on the site, but it comes in a bunch of different metallics, and I felt it worked up fairly nicely. It was less poopy than other metallics, so you can see right in here I've used it. I tried to do French knot out of it. I, I really thought I could master it, but it just, this against the silk, it was just super knotty. But I think that's really pretty. So what we're going to do today, and I feel like I'm going fast here. So if you've got questions, you guys, I know we're going to have time at the end, is we're going to do, uh, first we're going to do, let's take a look at this, what I've got here. Um, not the Cretan first. We're going to, well, maybe the zigzag Cretan. That's what John said we're doing. No, that's not what we're doing. Hold on. I'm looking at all my little books. I've got so many books, I love them. Oh, the zigzag coral knot stitch. Zigzag coral knot stitch. This is in another book. I had to look at it left-handedly. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I learned this weekend working and working it is so important to pay attention to where the thread comes up, where the needle goes down, and where the thread goes across. This is such an important relationship, and I didn't really pay attention to it until this weekend, and then it was like, yeah, this is really important. So let's do the zigzag coral stitch, and I believe it's in this book in, in this book too, okay? But again, I have many, many books and I go from all of them. So where is it on here? And why do I like you? Here it is. Here it is, the zigzag coral stitch. And basically it's a zigzag, but then it's got this little knot on the end, which I think is really quite endearing. By the way, I am getting happier and happier and happier with this piece as I sew along. As I shared with you, I wasn't sure if I'd like the pastels. Well, guess what? I'm freaking in love with them. I mean, can it get any better than that? Right? All right. So, what I... Where's my needle? Oh, here we go. I have, Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, what I did was I drew parallel lines because it showed, it showed me to do that in the book. And I think that that's a great thing to do. And um, here we go. I used my Quilter Select Disappearing Ink Pen, and I just love it. John's coming in already. More long term. Long term? Okay. Do you need to get in and talk today? No. Okay. Are you sure? All right. So here I'm going to come up on one of the lines, again, we're doing a zigzagging coral stitch, all right? Then I'm gonna come down right next to it, headed in the direction I want to go. So I'm gonna take a little stitch, and then this is the key part. I come over this stitch. Now remember, I'm a left-hander, so you would be stitching with your right hand, holding with your left hand. Okay, I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to come down through this. Boy, this doesn't feel right to me. And there I've got the knot. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to come up. All right. And then, oh my gosh, I think, I'm, I think this is going awry. Come up here. Oh, shoot. You know what? I should have practiced this before. Oh, no, that's good. Okay. So I'm going to come back up here to the top. 
come down. I'm going to hold this over here. This is really important. Hold the thread on top of the needle. Come on in. And then come on down through that. Here, I'm going to just go a little bit more. Ah, hold that. And then I'm going to come on down. Under the big one, under, over, no, that's not right. Uh-oh, I'm going to get fired on this one, people. Okay, I'm going across. See, I've already screwed up. Okay, this is the blind leading the blind. No, I really, I, I had it down. <laughs> I had it down a week ago. I should not allow myself to do anything that's not 24 hours before the demo. Forgive me, please. But I know this never happens to you. And believe it or not, this is a super easy stitch. It's just you have to understand the rhythm of the whole thing. All right. So I'm going to come hold this down. I'm going to come here. Come here. Okay. I'm going to take this on, on top. And then I'm going to come down through this loop. Oh, I did it! And I will tell you, it is a little disconcerting to be doing this in front of you right now. Especially when I feel like I'm screwing up. Go on top. And then go under. And there's your little knot. Down, go over, then go under, and pull. And that is your zigzag coral stitch. What do you think? Ta-da! Are we good? It is in that one book. All right, so now let me cut that off with scissors. And I want to do, let me see if there's any questions right here. I always happens to be when I do a cast on such time. Chantelle, I don't know why I disappeared. Oh, Rondi, John's uh, doing fine. He's still not 100%, but I mean, he can drive and all that. Sometimes he sees little dots um, jumping in front of him in his eye. But uh, the guy said it could be up to a year to get the full benefit of the whole thing to see it. All right. Let's go here. And again, the other day I said, I, I, I really do. I didn't think I liked looking, working in a hoop. Guess what? I, I really do. The other thing is I don't like it if the silk, if the lines aren't parallel within the silk. I don't really care for that. But we will just forage through. All right. So now I want to do the Cretan stitch, and let's take a look at that. I think the one I just showed you is a little bit harder, but we'll see. Okay, so where? Okay, so here we go. This is a lovely base stitch, lovely. And then you can see. Yesterday I was working on this like mad. I used the little uh, lazy daisy loops next to it, and uh, the little French knots here. And this is, these little French knots are when I realized it was too hard to do out of this metallic thread. But again, I do love it. Okay. So let's do the, in this little book, the Cretan stitch. All right. It is on page 41, if you have this little book. But I can tell you it's probably in most books. So, on this one, and again, where did my thread go? I know none of this happens to you guys when you're sewing. It's like everything just kind of flipping and implodes. So, I've got my knot here. I'm going to come up here. And if you want, you could draw 
another little line on the inside. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it. But you could do that or do that thing on your thumb or someone said put tape on. So I come up and then what I'm going to do is come down here. This line headed this way to here. And I make sure that, let me see, this is on top of here, here. This I mean, this catch is underneath there. Let me turn in frame. And then I go here. This goes under them. This is a really good base stitch to be able to play with. It's going under the needle, the thread. And what happens is when I learn a new stitch, I have to sit there and do it mindfully and um, say, okay, you go in, come up, you go under, and I just have to keep saying that. Up, go under, and so forth. I really like this stitch a lot because the possibilities are endless. And I am doing it kind of big. If you felt you could not space them properly, another thing you could do is take your little pen. Etc., and then use those as your spacers. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh, that's a great idea, Pat, is that when you're doing sample stitches, write down your sample of what stitch you have done for future ref reference. Yes, completely. So let's just. Let's just go one more completely. You could make like a little book. Anyways, I bought some fabric from Honey Run in Chico. Great quilt shop. I, I just, I can't say enough about them. And I got home and um, I needed more and they could pull it up in their computer and get me exactly what I wanted, what I purchased before. So look, okay, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a little lazy daisy here just for grins. Yeah, if somebody wants to take over hosting, I might pay you. No, I'm just kidding. Come down here. Oh, I got back my two Sue Spargo samples from Joey. I just almost cried when they took them by mistake because I couldn't even imagine starting from scratch. I mean, oh, geez, look how cute that is. Also, I dug into some of my Valdani silk threads and um, they're absolutely lovely, lovely. I'll show you on my sample. Uh, I found, again, with the French knots, it was pretty slippy. So I don't know if it's silk against silk because I've used that Valdani silk up against on on Sue stuff and it's no big deal. Look at that. It's flipping adorable. Let's do another thing here. You could even do with the size of this, you could do three French knot. I mean three of these lazy daisies. So the idea is that stitch something and then look at it and say, well how can I improve you? What can I do to make you more interesting? That's really cute. Super cute. Oh, I'm losing track of time because I'm having too much fun sewing. So I'm going to Craft Napa. Leaving Wednesday. I will be doing a Wednesday live. See, look at that. And then you could do another one here and you'd end up with this cute little zigzag thing going on. Fun! Um, the colonial one, the colonial knot, um, is 
is I haven't, the colonial French knot, I haven't learned it yet. And my friends say the, um, it's easier than the French knot. And I look at it and, um, can I live in California if I host? <laughs> Probably under a shopping cart. God, so expensive here. So anyways, oh, they do look like little people. Little arms could go across. That is funny. All right. Got some questions here, I believe. Brenda, you have the shingles? That sucks. I am so sorry. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. What's that, John? Oh, you know, um, I thought about, add, I'm thinking about adding beads to my piece. And uh, what was that? I just heard something fall. Um, but I wouldn't do it I mean, oh, it'd be beautiful. I wouldn't do it probably until the last thing because I think the threads would get caught on it and stuff like that. So I know some of you have done it already. In my book, I think that's just giving yourself problems, but I think any sort of um, embellishment would be fabulous. So I wanted to show you this. This is the silk thread, the Baldoni silk thread. Um, and see how fine it is next to like the cotton? I like them both. The other thing is, don't forget this adorable little back stitch that can just be so simple and so lovely, and especially in this variegated color family. Just great. All right, see, I think over in here now, I'm gonna have to add some stuff. You know, I just don't know when you say, okay, that's it, I'm done. I, I don't care for these harsh outsides so much, so I love that I added these here. And I love that I added this. So I think I will probably be doing more stuff like that around the edges. And also, people, feel free to overlap. All right? Feel free to overlap. Let me put this on here and hold it up. I, I think I, I don't even... I, I'm not done. I'm not even close to being done. But this is the, the, the gift that keeps on giving. Okay. It's this little book. Oh, pfft. And it is $7.95. It's a CNT publishing. I am I I suggested this book that's also uh, Kristen's also. Um, it, we sell both these on the site. Lovely things with Kristen's. It takes a stitch and then it shows you all the things you can do with it. But being a left-hander uh, can be tricky. We do not sell this on the site. But um, I believe I got it from Sue Spargo. I'm pretty sure you can get it on Amazon. This has been a lifesaver for me. So between um, right-handed things and this, I'm able to do it. Plus, in this, it will go... I would not recommend this if you're a right-hander, but it will show you how to go through it if you're a left-hander, and then there's a little right-hander thing there. Just like in Christine's, there's a little bit of left-hander stuff going on, too. So... What we're going to, okay, I'm going to Craft Napa on Wednesday. I'm taking two classes with Joanne Sharp and one with Libby Williamson. And there's very, it's very small Craft Napa. I feel bad for Pokey, but I feel happy for us. And Pokey's been very mindful that the classes will not be smashed full. We wear a mask and all that good stuff. And you show your Vax card and or you show your I'm clear, I'm clear card. Well, I'm going to be picking up Joanne at the airport tomorrow. And we're going to head off Wednesday, and I go, whoa, hold on, let's do a live. So Joanne and I are going to do a live on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. She uh, is incorporating a lot of her art into stitchery, and I thought you might be interested to see what she's doing. Completely different than this, but super uber fun. Um, the other thing in starting the next class we're going to be doing, I'd like to give you guys a sneaky peeky. It's going to be neutrals. And I've started in. I, I, that grunge I fell in love with, and that was at Honey Run, and so was the polka dot stuff. But we will be putting together kits for you guys. But I think that this is a huge, um, this is going to be great. I'm very, very, very excited about it. That's just a sneaky beaky. Um, 
Uh, what's um, a clear card versus a vax card? A clear card is you go and you get yourself tested, and then it comes out that, well, that got take that out, that you're fine. You know, a lot of venues are doing that. Either show me that you've, you're, you don't have it, or show me your vax card. So, yeah, neutrals are really fun because you will certainly understand value if you have any issue with that by the time it's over. You will understand light, medium, dark if you have any issue with that by the time it's over. And you'll uh, learn that it's okay to mix color families. So, for instance, I'm using, we'll go back here, I'm using both grays and taupes, and it all works together beautifully. So, okay, so Diane says go to kizamoser.com for fabulous embroidery on crazy quilts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So today I've got to kind of start thinking about what I'm taking to Craft Napa, but in the case of both Joanne and Libby and most of the teachers there, you have to bring hardly anything. They bring everything and it's so fabulous because you just go play in their junk, you know? And um, so I'll see you Wednesday morning and uh, who knows what's going to come out of Joanne in my mouth. The older I get, the more I cannot, I, the, the, it's gone, <laughs> it's just gone, <laughs> and I do try to behave here if possible. Um, let's see, make sure you know the different venues within so many days or hours. Thank you, Lindy, yes, yes, that is the truth. And in fact, my two grandies are home from school today because someone in their class, in each class had it. So one kid's, William's waiting for, I'm all, I'm all clear, and Lennox has to wait till Thursday. I don't understand. I don't understand any of this stuff. So have a good day. Um, oh, I started watching This Is Us again. I'm in the fifth season. The sixth has kicked up. If you want easy, if you're my age, and you want easy listening, ask Alexa to play the sound score from uh, This Is Us. It's pretty good stuff. And some of the stuff takes me way back to the 70s. Okay, so you guys, thank you so much. Oh, when will Dee's classes return? John, when is Dee coming back? I mean, she is. What? When's Dee's going to be starting, do you know? I don't have the exact I don't know either. Yeah. Was it like February or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, just, yeah, it, no, we, we will send it to you, but right now she's taking a little bit off. So, Okay. And she's going to do something on color. I'm doing neutral. She's doing color. There you go. Take your pick or do both. <laughs> so take care and I'll see you Wednesday with my partner in crime, Joanne Sharp.